So hello everyone. I hope you enjoy DevCon so far. This is our last talk in this session room. And this talk is about journey into the world of service meshes and meshery by Nitish and Aditya. And if you have any questions, please leave it uh, in a Q&A section. And let's go into the talk. Awesome. Thanks, Lucy. So let me share my screen. Okay, is my screen visible? Okay. I hope my screen is visible. Uh, Nitish, can you confirm once? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, nice. Yep, Thank it's you. Visible. Hello, Devcon. Uh, how many of you are uh, sitting uh, in your chairs with a cup of coffee? wearing tops and bottoms that uh, don't match each other. Don't worry, uh, we are also doing the same thing. Uh, it was during the stage of mid pandemic in 2021, uh, when we didn't have any idea about what is a service mesh. That's when we decided to explore about it. I'm Aditya Krishna and I'm an associate software engineer at Red Hat. I'm also a machinery maintainer at Layer 5. Along with me today, we have Nitish Karthik. Hello everyone, I'm Nitish Karthik and I'm from Chennai, India. And I'm a maintainer of Meshri and I've been contributing some to, to the most of the layer 5 projects which are revolving around service meshes as well. So, yeah. Thank you, Nitish. So, uh, what can you expect from this uh, talk? This is an introductory talk on uh, service meshes and a couple of projects which revolve around it. The Idea is to uh, give you a taste of what service mesh is and a glimpse of what uh, is happening in the community uh, regarding service meshes. So uh, let's get started. Now, what is a service mesh? Service mesh is a way to control um, how different parts of an application uh, share data and communicate with each other. Service mesh can help you to manage communication between services on your own without letting you compromise on security. And of course, your debugging process becomes a lot easier as well. And uh, coming to service mesh architecture. So this is uh, how service mesh architecture looks like. In this, we have two gateways where network traffic enters the service mesh with respect to the ingress gateway and exit the service mesh with respect to egress gateway. Along with this, we have two more components, that is data plane and control plane. This is responsible for service discovery, authentication, and a couple of other things. In data plane, uh, it is responsible for all the magic uh, regarding service mesh. And finally, we have control plane. You can consider it something like a brain of the service mesh. So why uh, should you care? Uh, your organization can benefit from a service mesh if you have large scale applications composed of many microservices. As your application traffic tends to uh, grow, you might need uh, complex routing capabilities to manage the flow of data between them. Service meshes are useful to manage uh, transport layer security connections between services. They can also allow developers to focus on adding business value to the project rather than worrying about communication between the services. For DevOps teams that have uh, an established CI CD pipeline, a service mesh can be essential for deploying apps, application infrastructure uh, to manage uh, test automation suits, uh, suits using Jenkins or Selenium. And it can help you to uh, manage network policies and security policies as well. You might have heard about many service meshes out there like Linkerd, Istio, Kuma, VMware's Tanzu service mesh, and a couple of others as well. So why there are so many of these? As different teams within a company adopt different service meshes, the 
main challenge uh, of managing multiple service meshes becomes a reality instead of using one big service mesh it makes more sense to install many small service meshes in multiple clusters now to talk about uh, what are the differences between them you can visit uh, bit.ly/devconf-sml which uh, directs you to this page which gives you a uh, complex comparison regarding various service measures uh, and its uh, focus on categories non functional aspects like uh, is it open source or not what uh, type of language are they using to build the service mesh and a couple of others and it also gives you a uh, thorough detail regarding functional aspects of the service mesh like does it support uh, prometheus integration or uh, um, proxy injection and a couple of others so now to help you manage these small service meshes which you hopefully deploy across multiple clusters we have meshery about which will be explained by my friend nitish over to nitish thank you aditya as aditya explained uh, it is actually a, a need of the hour to you know manage multiple service meshes and people are actually looking to uh, deploy multiple uh, meshes in their clusters and uh, they don't actually want to learn how each and every service mesh implements their uh, functionality that they provide so that is where meshery comes in so meshery is actually a service mesh management plane that sits on top of your service mesh architecture and it enables the adoption operation and management of any service mesh and their workloads you can actually learn more about it by going to meshery.io and now let's look at the architecture of meshery so meshery essentially has uh, three major components one is a meshery server which uh, kind of you can relate to like it uh, like the kubernetes api server uh, where the client will actually uh, communicate with the server and we have meshery operator uh, which would be deployed inside the cluster and it would uh, handle things like uh, synchronizing the state of cluster with meshery and uh, some of other things like health checks and all those stuff and uh, we have uh, a bunch of adapters for each and uh, for the service meshes that meshery supports and these adapters are uh, what allows uh, you to manage uh, what allows meshery as a user of meshery to manage multiple service meshes at the same time and the communication is with the uh, meshery and the adapters are generally done via grpc communication so let's see what service mesh patterns are so since uh, service meshes have a strong control over the networking aspect of your infrastructure it allows people to do things like uh, circuit breaking retries etc which uh, slowly evolved into a set of good practices or uh, patterns as we call it so service mesh patterns are about enabling the use of uh, repeatable architecture templates so these are some of the characteristics of the service mesh patterns and uh, service mesh patterns are uh, still actively under development and if, if you are interested in it uh, then i highly encourage you to hop into the community and uh, lafa community and then yeah you can contribute to it and uh, there are many more patterns out there and uh, some of uh, which are already created by our community members at lafa which you can check out by visiting the links uh, github.com slash service mesh patterns and uh, meshery.io slash catalog so we have a plugin in meshery called uh, meshmap which allows you to uh, you know visually edit and manipulate your patterns and also visualize your infrastructure so without wasting our time let's let's uh, go to the demo right now i'm sharing my screen yeah i hope my screen is visible aditya can you confirm yes it is okay so we have meshery over here and as you can see uh, it is connected to a docker desktop kubernetes cluster so i can check the, uh, the connection between the kubernetes cluster and meshery by clicking on it which would give you the status of it and um, as as i discussed in the meshery architecture slide uh, we have meshery adapters which allow you to manage multiple service meshes so let's let's see how uh, let's actually try to configure uh, one of the adapters so i actually have one of the adapters running at uh, in localhost 10000 or meshery is the adapter okay now that i have connected to the meshery is the adapter which is running at uh, localhost 10000 i now should be able to manage the life cycle of istio service mesh okay so 
we have options like uh, deploying a service mesh and then uh, automatic sidecar injection. So this is basically where you can we can manage the life cycle of service meshes. Uh, this is uh, these are the service meshes that Meshery currently supports, and it's uh, it's the list is actually growing. So and it also have has support for Grafana, Jager, and Kiali, and some of the other add-ons that uh, Istio natively supports, and the same for other service meshes that as well. So yeah, and we actually have. Uh, uh, the ability to create patterns and edit patterns and all those stuff, and we can actually deploy patterns over here. Although I would not be able to cover all of the aspects of uh, what Meshery is trying to accomplish, I'll just give a taste of what uh, what are the components that are available over here. So we have a pattern configurator which we can use to create and add and manipulate patterns and uh, deploy them. And we have support for multi uh, for the adapters that are deployed currently. And apart from that, we also have uh, service mesh performance and profiles. So uh, we can actually compare how uh, each and every service mesh contrast, and uh, uh, we can analyze the performance of uh, each and every service mesh that you want to. So yeah, that is a bit about what uh, Meshery is and what we're trying to accomplish. So if that's, if that's of interest to you, then uh, you should actually join the community and uh, yeah, so let's. Uh, I would like to now hand it over to Aditya Krishna to talk about what SMI and SMP are. Aditya, over to you. Thank you, Ritesh. Let me share my screen. Okay, uh, thank you, Ritesh. Uh, about SMI, service mesh interface. It is a, a specification uh, that covers the most common service mesh capabilities uh like traffic policy traffic telemetry traffic management and a couple of other stuff the smi is specified as a collection of uh, kubernetes custom resource definitions or kubernetes crd along with extension apis servers these apis can be installed onto any kubernetes cluster and manipulated using standard tools coming to smp which stands for service mesh performance it is a standard for capturing and characterizing the details of infrastructure capacity, service mesh configuration, uh, workload met metadata, and it also captures complex details like uh, environment and infrastructure details, number and uh, size of your nodes, service mesh and its configuration, uh, workload and application details, and it also does a statistical analysis to characterize the performance. So that's about the brief of uh, SMI and SMP. If you have any uh, doubts, uh, you can reach out to us at uh, discuss.layoffire.io and uh, feel free to get in touch with us on uh, our community Slack at uh, slack.layoffire.io and we are also welcoming uh, new contributors interested in contributing to open source for which you can visit uh, github.afi.io. So, yep. uh, thank you everyone. That was uh, our talk regarding service measures and machinery. And we are open to Q&A. Thank you, Aditya. Sorry, um, hoping just starting to playing with me. But thank you for your talk. It was really interesting. Um, there's no Q&A so far. So if anyone have a questions, please reach out to Aditya and uh, Nitish. Uh, if you're from Red Hat, you know where they where you can find them or they will be in Hopin for a few minutes. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for our session.